Hi friends, it's Tori here again with Fox and Hazel and I'm just back with another art journaling process video. Um, actually this little journal that I'm working in here is a travel journal that I'm doing with um, a bunch of women through Get Messy Art Journaling. And so this came from Janet, this is her journal. I was the first one to add to it. So the background she did where it's kind of got the different colors in the white. And so I'm just working off that and building my own spread here. And the first thing I'm doing was adding this um, Fluid Acrylic by Golden. It's their iridescent gold, fine, I believe it is. And it's exciting because I just treated myself to this big bottle of it. I had like a tiny two ounce bottle that I have been using for the last like, I don't know, gosh, three years. And I was like saving it because I didn't want to run out. And then I finally did. And so I finally just went and got myself a big, huge bottle of it. And now I'm just going in with, um, this is Iron Lac. Um, it's an Iron Lac uh, paint marker in Lynn's Iceberg. And I'm gonna apologize guys if I sound funny on here, if I sound very nasally. Um, I either have a sinus cold or my allergies are out of control. I can't really tell. There is like so much pollen in the air here, but I've had a cold for about a week now and it's all in my sinuses. So <laughs> I apologize if this sounds like I'm sick. It's because I am sick. <laughs> So yeah, that was the iron lac marker and the next one here I'm using is another iron lac marker. It's just like a bullet tip one uh, called Sublime and it's like a very chartreuse green. I love it. So I sat down the other day and just decided to, I don't know, I had like no plan for this. So you guys are seeing it all happen in real time because, or not like real time, but as in like I had no plans for it. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't, I just grabbed a whole bunch of supplies and just sat down and put some music on and hoped something showed up good out of it. So I'm sorry, I forgot to edit this part out apparently. I'm just heat drying uh, the paint because I didn't want it for, for it to, I didn't want to wait for it to dry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and so now I think I'm like searching for other paint. Let's see, oh no, these are, oh, I hadn't used these in a while. I pulled these out. Um, these are my Jane Davenport mermaid markers. And apparently this one was very juicy right off the hop. I think that's, I want to say that's either, um, I want to say it's lobster. No, it's not lobster. It's the coral shades. Maybe it's just called coral reef or coral or something. I know it's not starfish or lobster. It's like my favorite shade, that one. And there's this um, teal kind of turquoisey one in the set that I am obsessed with. And I can't get these anywhere up here. Well, like, okay, so when I first got them, I had to like hunt Michaels and like stock them forever because they had the world's tiniest like Jean Davenport section and they were out forever. And then I got lucky and also got myself a 50% off coupon. Um, but now that Jane has like new sets that are like only five or six pens or markers, I need to go find more. But I can't find them. Every time I go to my local Michaels, they're sold out because they go like hotcakes because they don't stock them. And so I go and they're always out of like the mermaid markers and the inks and that kind of thing. So I think that's just being in Canada. So we always seem to get less of something and then it seems to take forever to get it restocked. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, this new color I'm using is a, another uh, golden high flow acrylic. So it's really meant for like airbrushing and stuff. Um, but I believe the shade is, oh, thallow turquoise or turquoise thallow, something like that. I love it. It's very intense. It's a very, it looks kind of more blue on, on camera, but it's really more of a turquoise. I guess <laughs> it's the best way to put it. And so I put way too much on there. If you saw that I squeezed, like dumped out way too much. So I took some off and now I'm just using a wet paintbrush to kind of um, move it around the page. This is like one of my favorite, favorite techniques is that um, using acrylic inks, but using them to get like a watercolor effect with them because then they're permanent, but I get that watery look that I like. And so I'm working over top of the Jane Davenport stuff and I'm being kind of particular about it because that stuff is, doesn't dry permanent. Um, it, it'll still move around if you get it wet. I know it's dye based, I believe, um, but it still has a tendency to shift around the page if you get it wet. Sorry, I was spinning that and it went everywhere. <laughs> this little journal so cute. Uh, Janet, like I said, this friend Janet of mine, she started it and I opened it and I was like instantly obsessed with it. I feel like I did not put enough effort into my travel journal for this collaboration. <laughs> I sent it to somebody else. I think there's about nine of us or 10 of us that are sending them like in a big circle. And I truthfully forgot about mine that we were supposed to be sending them. And I was reminded and I was like, oh, so I kind of like slapped something together over the couple days. 
and hopefully everyone else does a really good job spending some time filling it in and then when I get it back finally I can go back and maybe add more to my pages. I also did mine as sort of like a glue book theme so if you're not familiar with a glue book a glue book is um they're like super old school but they're basically just like a book to glue stuff in like it's so literal but it's for like if you find like magazine images you like or like invitations or cards or bits of paper and stuff like that it's a place just to put it all and so I kind of love that idea I've never done an art journal that's mostly collage or gluing things in like I'm obviously very heavy on paint and drawing and so I just love the idea of having like a a book full of like pretty things stuck into it so Hopefully it comes back and it's interesting. I love seeing everyone's different styles all side by side, especially because the group of women that I'm sending it with were all like very different artists. Like everyone has a totally different style. So I was trying to, like this is still my style, but um, I was trying to emulate Janet's um, brightness because she, I don't get to show you a lot of her, I don't show her any of the pages, but her stuff is like very bright and happy and cheerful and like instantly makes you want to smile. So I was trying to emulate that same, like keep it within my style, but emulate that same joy that I felt when I opened up her pages. So hopefully by the end, I have that same feeling. <laughs> Um, and now I'm just going in with some Liquitex. This is just like the basics, like the cheap stuff from uh, Michaels. And it's the light blue violet shade. And so you can see here, it's not very opaque. Um, probably because A, the shade of paint, and B, it's just the cheapy stuff. I'm sure if I had the nicer quality stuff, maybe it would be nicer. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm just like endlessly layering stuff here. Like all over. You can see I took a, my, my micron and added some drawings in there to try and create some images to work around and so yeah I guess I I like I said this is kind of like I'm winging it and hopefully it it all turns out I, I feel pretty lucky maybe it's like my art journaling process has changed over the years I know when I first started art journaling I was very like this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna plan out my page this is what it's gonna look like and then if it didn't turn out I was very disappointed in it I was like, oh, and I never like just sewed over my pages, but I just feel like that's a really ugly art journal page. <laughs> and now I guess I go with an attitude of sort of like, oh, well, you know, like, I guess we'll just see what happens. And I've made a few that I found to be really like unpleasant and I don't really like. Oh, sorry, that was my phone. I apologize. <laughs> if you heard it, maybe you didn't. Um, anyways, I felt like I I'm just so much more relaxed about my art journaling and I guess a lot more intuitive. And I guess the other part too is that, I mean, I've been art journaling for, oh gosh, probably like in seriousness, um, probably three years now or more. And I feel like over that time, I've also really learned to trust my intuition. I think when you're starting art journaling, it's really easy to second guess yourself. And if you're, if it's new to you and creating art is new to you, it can be very intimidating and you question whether or not you're making the right choice with your art. And we find ourselves uh, maybe emulating other people's work a lot more to try and find our own style. And so, you know, if it doesn't come out just like this other person's work or just like you thought it was going to be, then you feel really discouraged by it. And I feel really lucky that um, my art practice has really evolved over the years in a way that I feel very confident in my work. And I feel not all the time. I mean, obviously, I have moments where I second guess myself, but I also feel like it allows me to let go of my work. So if it ends up being ugly, I'm not discouraged by it. If it's ugly, I'm like, oh, well, that was just a page. That was just one art journal spread. I know that the next one I make will be better and that's okay. And it's okay to have, have ugly pages. You know, every artist will tell you that for every great thing they post on Instagram or share or sell or whatever, they have sketchbooks and sketchbooks of terrible work and ugly stuff and unfinished work <laughs> and all the rest. And so... If you're, you know, in that weird spot, like, I just want you to know that you're not alone, that, you know, everyone goes through stages of not liking their work. And hopefully the more that you practice, the more confident you'll be in your work. And I hope you are at a stage where you're confident in your work. But if you're not, then don't worry. You will get there eventually. <laughs> it just takes practice. Um, I was fortunate last month to be interviewed with Art Journaling Magazine, or not last month, I guess it came out last month or the month before, but it was, you know, obviously months before that. And the, the quote they chose from my, all the ramblings I had was just, it's something I really believe in is that I don't think that art is all talent. I think a lot of it is actually really hard work. It's not like I just woke up one day and could just make art like this. 
You know, like this is the fruition of three years of creating art on an almost daily basis that I can make something like this in, you know, a 30 minute times frame. But, you know, three years ago, I couldn't. Three years ago, I struggled with it. I second guessed everything. My pages were super clunky and ugly. And, you know, I didn't understand color theory as well as I should have. And, you know, so if you are discouraged by your work, all I can say to encourage you is that I just hope you keep making art, even if you're unsure about it. So that was my little, you know, encouragement boost. That was a total buddy trail, but I hope it encourages you. <laughs> Um, for those who are going to want to know, that stamp I just used with the little two fingers is um, from Studio Calico. Um, it's meant for scrapbooking, I'm assuming, or Project Life stuff. But anyways, it's like a set of hands that it's like a hand holding up numbers one through five. And as soon as I saw it, I had to buy it. It was on sale. It was like a total impulse purchase, but it was fantastic. And the other pen, paint, sorry, pen I just used there was just a Faber-Castell pit pen, like artist pit pen in like a soft brush tip. And um, these like random black doodles are slowly becoming like a favorite within my work. I find that I want to do them on like everything. So I'm embracing it and using them more. Um, the pen I'm using here on top of this acrylic is a Sakura jelly roll pen. It's a souffle one. So the souffle ones, um, maybe you'll get to see it, I guess, as I'm working. They go on transparent or like translucent. It doesn't really look like I'm doing anything here, but as it dries, they dry opaque and then they kind of puff up just the tiniest bit off the page. So they're really cool. They add a bit of texture and they also um, are really good to draw on dark backgrounds with. So um, I hate the Secura Jelly Roll white pen. Like I hate them. And I will openly say that, that I hate them. <laughs> Lots of people like them. I can't stand them. However, I love the Souffle white pen because it just seems to go on flows nicer and then it dries opaque so I can draw on dark stuff with it. So if you are struggling with the regular white gel pen from the Jelly Roll line, try and get a white Souffle pen and give that a try. I love it because I like the fineness, like the fine tip of the Secure pens. The Uniball ones are great, but they, you know, they're a bit, um, they're more of a, like they're abroad, so they're thicker. So anyways, try the opaque ones or the Souffle ones. I think you'll like it. And as you can see here, now you can kind of see up on the right side there that uh, Souffle pen has dried a bit. And you can see that it's like a very light pink. So, and now I'm going in with a water brush and this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's pen white, um, white pen ink <laughs> seems so redundant to say that <laughs> um it's people use it for like calligraphy and stuff and i just use it for painting obviously um actually in this sort of technique um is from another artist i know through get messy this idea of like painting with white like white florals on top of stuff as um kate sherwood um i'll link to her instagram in my video um her stuff is amazing and she does a lot of this type of um using white she uses white gouache on top of her stuff and i I love it. Like I'm obsessed with it. Like, like I love her stuff and I love this method. So I totally copied her. And so all credit goes to her for it. <laughs> and now I'm just adding bits and pieces here. Like I said, I'm just kind of filling it in where I think I need it. And I really like the look of white on top of dark backgrounds. I think everybody does. It's like chalkboard drawing and painting became really popular and stuff. So I'm just kind of doing the same thing here. And you can see if you try and start the video, especially right there where I kind of, my hand is like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm questioning my choices. <laughs> and I find I do that a lot where I'm like, I, I don't know. I edit most of it out just because I don't think you guys need to see me humming and hawing over my page for like five minutes. But um, I do question my art choices frequently. And my hands always make a funny gesture when I'm doing it. <laughs> so now what do I do? You think I would remember, I only made this page like two days ago, but I am off looking for an art supply. Oh, I'm getting my micron pen. Oh, I'm just going back over uh, some of those lines. Oh, and you get to see my beautiful hair and my head in the way. I apologize. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm using the micron pens here. Man, I recommendations from anybody. So I like microns, like I love them. However, I think like there's an overwhelming understanding that they don't work great on acrylic. And so, but I want something that's as fine as a micron. And I guess I just haven't found a waterproof 
um, like a waterproof black pen that writes on top of acrylic that is as fine as a micron. Like I like using down to the 0 0.005 or whatever. It is like less than the one. And so um, I think I'm using a three here. I think it's a three. Anyways, um, so if you have a recommendation for a really fine, pit, sorry, fine tip, it could either be a ballpoint or a felt tip. I don't really care. I just want it to be super fine tip, waterproof, and black. And if you have, and then we'll draw on acrylics. That's the big thing. If you have that, hit me up, share with me. I need to know because I like acrylics, but you can see I keep switching back and forth between my three and my five because one will work for a bit and then it doesn't. And then I have to let it like sit and chill out because I'm nervous. I'm going to like wreck the nib and these things are expensive. So anyways, give me a recommendation for pens. So I'm just doing like a scallop edge here and I'm going to tell you guys right now I posted this on Instagram last week and actually it's funny I posted it on Instagram but then I showed it to my husband and he looked at the finished spread and he looked right at it and goes Tori are those boobs <laughs> and I had a few people on Instagram ask the same thing and I was like you're right they're yes yes they are 100% boobs it is a scallop pattern of boobies so if you see that if you saw my Instagram post then you were spot on <laughs> I just thought, why not, right? It's my art, it's my page. I actually have had this idea of doing like this scallop pattern, but with breasts for like a month now in my head. And I just haven't got around to putting it on anything. And so I think I'm gonna do a, I wanna do like a wallpaper, like pattern, not like for your wall, but like a desktop wallpaper, or like a phone wallpaper or something of lovely, lovely boobs, but in this scallop pattern. So anyways, you can see I'm trying to go in with my, microns and they're just giving me a heck of a time here so I did some I tried to make them all different sets to celebrate all different shapes and sizes of women's goods so because they are goods um, if you don't follow me on Instagram I did my watercolor challenge with earlier in the month and I posted a watercolor painting of um, sorry of a woman's body like full-on boobs you know nether regions and uh, unsurprisingly, I had probably mm, 60 people unfollow me. And not that it really matters about numbers or followers, but it was a direct correlation to like they were like offended by this picture that they unfollowed me. And then I proceeded to go on Instagram and have a little rant about it. And so I've made a commitment to myself to including more female bodies in my work because I can't believe in this day and age that there's people who are that uh, upset by seeing a woman's body that they... In, and especially in the context of art, like it's not like it's just a nude photo of someone or like whatever, like it's art, it's drawn, it's not pornographic, it's not offensive. So my boobies up here were an ode to my new challenge of trying to include more female forms and body parts and celebrating women in my work. And so I think this page is almost done. I decided to pull out this hand carved stamp. I just, oh my gosh, I carved this thing like forever ago. And uh, I'm just using a... Ranger Ink Archival Pad in Jet Black. I mean, like everybody has this. <laughs> it's like the holy grail of black stamping or um, permanent stamping. And so I'm just ghosting it. So I did one and then I'm not really like making sure they come out clear. I kind of wanted that grungy layered look. And so, yeah, that's it. I think I finish. Am I done? Oh, I had to sign it. That's what I'm doing. I didn't quite know what I was doing there. Um, so because it's a travel journal, we have to sign all of our pages. I don't really don't sign my art journals. I mean... Maybe I should. I don't know, but I'm not. That's not my jam. I'm just signing it so that everybody knows it was my page <laughs> on here. And it feels weird because my signature doesn't feel like important enough for anything when I sign stuff because I don't know. I feel like artists should have more flair to their signs, but and your signatures. But anyway, so that's it. This is my completed little art journal for this traveling collaboration one. So I don't get to keep it. I took some photos and um, I'll do a few more spreads. Hopefully I'll film those ones as well in here and then I'll send it on ways to the next person in the line so thanks so much for watching you guys uh, make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell so that you always get updates when i have new videos and you can find me on instagram at fox and hazel and make sure you check out my blog foxandhazel.com for way more tutorials thanks so much you guys bye